Hello and welcome to another League of Legends commentary. This is actually an all random all mid game, or RM, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so on blue team we have Zillion, Ziggs, Nocturne, Soraka, Karthus. On the purple team we'll have Gragas, Ari, Rise, Morgana, and Kale. Uh, I think this looks like a really interesting uh, lineup. There's a lot of poke on both teams. A couple big things that I think are particularly interesting and will have a big impact on this game are probably the Morgana ult ultimate. Uh, she, as you may know, can hit the entire team, the other team, with her ultimate, which does a lot of damage and can also stun all five of them. And on this map, there's just not a lot of room to run around and so it'll be easier or it'll be easier to land it all than it would be on summoner's rift on the other hand we do have ziggs who has a big aoe ultimate and can use that at long range also uh, so when champions get low in this game they're not going to have much place to run and it'll seem like almost a guaranteed kill for Ziggs. On this map there's a lot of people with low health but they don't want to go in and fight obviously because they're low health and they'll die but they can't go back because they can't heal up at the well so they just kind of end up running around in lane for a long time until they manage to get some life back just by natural regeneration. So that will fare quite well for Ziggs ult. Um, Karthus, he's always a tough one to go against. Oh, he is taking a lot of damage from the opposite team. Grex does have a really good poke with his barrel there. Ari has a really good poke with uh, not only her Q, but her taunt also. Well, I guess charm, technically it's called. But Karthus Salt is always a pain to deal with, and he does have that late waste which he can spam out and deal a lot of damage. There's some more poke with Nocturne's uh, Shadow Trail. I actually forget the name of the ability. But that has pretty good range on it. Zillion can put down bombs on people and have that blow up on people. Ziggs has his bouncing bomb for a lot of poke, and actually a Satchel Charge too. Morgana has that pool that she just put down that can help a lot with the zoning. Though, as you see, Ziggs has something else very similar to also help with zoning. Rise gets the first kill onto Soraka. So, bonus point for Purple Team. But a back to pool, uh, back to poke, rather. Morgana also has that long range Q, a snare, which can be very powerful. Um, Gragas, too, I already mentioned his poke, his barrel, but he has his ultimate barrel, too, which can do a lot of damage and help a lot to rearrange the enemy team. I'm not too familiar with Kale. Her ultimate does make a friendly champion. Sorry, I'm going to uh, make a friendly champion temporarily invulnerable. So, obviously that will help at times, but I don't know just how much they can do for it. Karthus going in there and suiciding. Uh, actually did get the kill. No, he did get the kill on Morgana. I'm not sure how exactly. Maybe he had an ignite. Okay, a lot of kills going down. Nocturne falls to Kale, Rise falls to Soraka, and Soraka falls to Ari. All in all, it looked like a two for three trade in Purple's favor. But as I was saying about Kale, she does have that ultimate, which can help. But for the most part, she's just a melee character. She can go ranged. But like I said, I'm not too familiar with her. And then there's Rise. It's not particularly a good champion for this map, I wouldn't say. But he does have a snare, and he does have his E, which is just like bouncing you, basically. And his Q, which 
doesn't have all that much range, but Rise is just kind of a relatively powerful champion all around, I would say. A lot of uh, damage going down on the Karthus there. I think I saw a Greg's ult there. And Karthus just kind of popped, so he's falling down. Purple Team is now up three kills already, and about a thousand gold. I think I said at the beginning of the game that it does look like Purple Team has the advantage. With Morgana and Gragas and Ari, it can be really difficult to deal with. Nocturne isn't really going to be able to do much in this game. He's going to have to sit back and throw out his Shadow Trail thing every once in a while. And for the time being, that's about all he can do. His ultimate is powerful. But it will put him in the middle of everybody else and will likely get picked off pretty easily there. Karthus dies for a third time. Oftentimes, Karthus is one of the characters who you kind of want to die because he can just get in there and then spam his abilities. But it's just not working out for him in his favor. Ari jumping in there, she did use her ult and a couple other abilities. Put a lot of damage on the Ziggs, but wasn't able to pick up that kill. Here comes the Karthus ult. Did not get any kills, but brought several of them very low. And Ziggs completely missing his ultimate from everybody. And now Grog's got a double kill. Morgana got a kill onto Nocturne, who did jump in there. But again, it put him in the middle of the other team. And he would just fell. Uh... Karthus managed to survive that little fight there. He did pick up a kill on the Gragas. And Soraka actually picking up a kill also. Or no, I'm sorry, was that Karthus again? I'm not sure. Anyway. Purple team is now up by seven kills. So they're dominating this game. Our H arm goes down onto Nocturne. Nocturne does manage to pick up the Kale, who's already very low. Some bombs and other things go onto Ari, but she uses her summoner spell defense shield barrier. It's called barrier. Excuse me. And that saved her life. Narrowly, but it worked. Now Rise picking off Zillion and Zillion, Zillion picking off Morgana. Small trade there. Ryze managing to catch Karthus and doing a bit of damage. Sorak is still very low. Gragas goes in there and grabs a kill and manages to walk out of it also. Nocturne still not able to do much. Ziggs is doing a pretty good job with those bouncing bombs, so the throwing goes out and the satchel charges. Gragas falling to almost no health right there. He should have backed off. He was way too low. I didn't see his final health count, but it was ridiculously low. And it just took one Nocturne Q to finish him off. Shit, I don't know why I do this. I start yawning once I start complicating and stuff. Anyway. Um, so the gold difference still isn't too big. If we take a look at items, there's actually not a lot of gold for 5 or gold for 10, whatever it is. Purple Dean does have 4 of those, however, while Blue Team has none. I was under the impression that getting more of those was generally a pretty good idea, just because you do spend a lot of time sitting in lane without the option to go back and buy. And so you may as well have those gold items to save up more money for when you do go back. That could be part of why the purple team has gained a lead by about 2,000 gold. Or 1,000. Did I read it wrong a moment ago? I'm not sure. Morgana disconnecting. That is going to be a big pain for purple team. I imagine that kind of like in Dominion, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I don't know if 
it'll make that much of a difference in this game in particular. I know in Dominion if you are one player down, it makes a massive difference. Obviously in Summoner's Rift, it makes a pretty big difference too. Ari using her ultimate and jumping in there and grabbing a kill. But in the process, she fell very low, along with Rise, and they were taken down quite quickly and easily. This is an all blue team is actually putting a lot of damage onto this turret here. Gragas comes in and does clear away the minions, which is going to force the blue team to back off, or else they'll tank those tower shots. The kills are actually being evened up a little bit here. Looks like Blue Team is making a bit of a comeback. I don't know how to describe or how to explain that other than that Morgana is gone. And that would be giving them trouble. Gragas using his ultimate and then his other abilities to pick up a double kill there on Soraka and Karthus. Zix has fallen really low, but Gragas and Ari have also gotten pretty low themselves. But they've managed to defend their tower for the time being. And actually, I'm noticing that Blue Tower has taken very little damage. Ziggs did use his ult right there, but I saw a barrier a barrier or two go down from Purple Team to counteract that damage. Now Zillion getting bursted down pretty quick there. The Purple Team have all fallen pretty low, and Blue Team with three full health champions are going to be able to jump in here and get at least a couple kills. There goes one and two, and Gragas to follow. That's a triple kill for Karthus, so he is getting pretty fed and is going to be a scary force later on in this game. Ari is pretty low forced to retreat to her second tower and still almost dying. And meanwhile, blue team is able to just push down the outer tower without a problem. Ari sticking around for a bit too long, getting a little too close. Karthus managed to pick her off into the lay waste. Now all of blue team is there to take down this inner turret, and purple team showing up at the last moment. They will be able to pick off Zilling here, but that's still a very bad situation for them. Kale is running very low, she won't be able to do much at all this game. Or for now. Nocturne trying to jump in but just does get snared by Rise. However, he manages to pick off Kale anyway with his Q. And then Karth is coming in and killing the Gragas and then the Ari. And now Rise is going to fall also again by a lay waste from Karthus. So now with four members still up, they're going to take down this turret. With that Morgana gone from the game, the blue team is just really taking over and pushing hard. They've taken a gold lead. They're still behind on kills by one, but that is going to change quite soon, and it doesn't even matter because they have too much pushing power right now. I don't think it's really their team in particular that makes them good at pushing, but just that purple team doesn't have one less person with me to defend. Karthus ult does take down Gragas. Kayla did get a kill there. But Purple Team is once again very low. Morgana is back in the game. Does get a nice snare onto Soraka, I believe. I know Ryze got his snare down and they were able to pick up that kill, but a pretty good Zigzal gets the kill onto Ari. Blue team having to get a little bit defensive here, falling back. Purple team extended a little bit too 
too much and Kale was picked off there. At this point, I feel like it's only a matter of time before Blue Team is able to push in and take down that inhibitor, which is going to give Purple Team a lot of trouble. However, if they do fall back into their base like that, then they are able to continue fighting and buying at the same time. They just don't, because they don't leave their base, the shop isn't close. So that does give them a little bit of a, and a little bit of an advantage, shit. A little bit of an advantage, but they're still far behind to get in that position in the first place. Nocturne jumping in there almost gets a double kill. But I just picked him off. Sorry about all my odds. I'm just not quite feeling in this right now. Actually, what just happened there, I noticed that four members of blue team were down while Soraka was very low. And at the same time, only one member of purple team was down. Ari did fall pretty soon after, and Gragas is pretty low, but that was just a good couple of engagements there. Morgana managed to pick up the kill on Zillion, and Gragas can take that kill onto Soraka, but not without being taken out by Ziggs. Now with Morgana back, the game has been a lot more even. Kale needs to get out of that Karthus circle. Morgana gonna die there. Couldn't do anything about it. That Karthus hole. There's just no escape from it. But like I was saying, Morgana being back really does help Purple Team a lot in this game. You can see that hasn't been nearly as one-sided since she's gotten back. Fight going down here, Kale falling. And Purple Team getting pushed back once again. Gragas does come in though, and they're going to be able to reverse that a little bit. It's still just kind of a standstill. But Purple Team is going to have to do a pretty damn good job to be able to come back and actually do the pushing that they need to. Even if they can't hold their own in team fights, it's not enough if they can't actually take that somewhere and push their advantage and take out some towers. Otherwise, they're never going to be able to win this game. Late game, I don't know which team would be more powerful. I'm pretty sure that Zillion scales off, or falls off late game. Whereas, Purple Team, I think, have a few members who do pretty well in the late game. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. We are approaching the late game. I currently see five Rabidons in the game, three on blue team and two on purple. Almost everybody in this game is AP, the exceptions being Kale and Nocturne. Some people would say that Ryze is not AP because he scales off of mana, but it's still magic damage, he's still a mage. So, I don't care too much. Kale just barely getting away from here, but she can't go back to well to heal. So she has to stay in that fight and she does fall. Purple team now here pushing the inhibitor. They have most of their team up. Not a lot of defense from purple team. This inhibitor is gonna fall here along with Rise. But not before Soraka falls. Nocturne ends up taking off that kill. So there goes the inhibitor. And now Purple is forced to fight inside their base at their turrets. So they should be able to hold off here pretty well for a while. Gragas managing to get a double kill off Karthus and Ziggs. But then Karthus being the zombie he is, kills Gragas as payback. And then Kale goes and kills the Nocturne.
So all in all, it's a pretty even trade for the most part. However, Purple Team did use their two towers to help them in that engagement. So if the game was actually fair, they would have had an advantage there and would not have come out so good. Team does turret dive a little bit to get that kill on Soraka. Rise thinking several hits from the turret. Morgana about to fall here. The Gragas ult does actually push Karthus close to Morgana. He doesn't manage to pick up the kill, but that's what the Ziggs ult is for. Picking her off at long range. Rise there almost taking a kill on his Ziggs, but with that tower he decided to back off. Ziggs and Nocturne are very low here. If Purple Team did decide to fight, they would have the advantage. And not only because they're a man up, no, two men up. Um, however, Soraka and Karthus are going to be rejoining the game soon here. And Blue Team does still have that turret up, which is making it pretty difficult for Purple Team to push in. Too afraid to take all that damage. several low champions now. Gonna have to be pretty careful even with only three enemies there. Soraka is pretty low though, but Blue Team just has so much health and enough damage that Purple Team can't quite do much about it just yet. Sorry for just kind of blinking out and not commentating there for a bit. But it's not, kind of hard to feel like it's not just the same old stuff. Actually, that was kind of nice right there. It wasn't just the typical people kill other people and then people die. Uh, Purple Team actually managed to pull out an ace there with a couple double kills, I think. I think that was a 5 for 2 trade. Karthus and Zillion taking a lot of damage from the alpha of Ryze and Gragas primarily. So it looks like Purple Team is going to be able to push this turret. I don't know if they're going to be able to get it down, but they should be able to. And yes, there it goes. So they're finally counter pushing. After 10 minutes or so of trying to defend and trying to save this game. Actually, they have taken a good lead on kills again. Up 8 kills now and up about 3,000 gold. So they are doing pretty well for themselves. Purple Team has a lot of spellbound between Ari, Rise, and Gragas. One will of the Ancients be a lot on its own, but two members decide to get some more on their own. Big team fight here. A lot of damage going down on both sides. Initially, I thought Purple had a massive advantage there, 
but as the battle has progressed, that Karth is just too powerful with his ultimate. Got a quadra kill. And that's an ace, a three for five exchange. So at this blue team will be able to push up and take that inhibitor down once more. And that's just gonna leave the purple team on the back foot trying to defend again. Purple team now has three Will of the Ancients. That's overkill, to be honest. Blue team actually has none, no spell ban, other than what they might have for masteries and rooms. I'm a little surprised by that. They've traded three kills for one. They will be able to pick up this million. That's four kills for one, actually. This Kale is really low. It needs to stay back. Uh, she could even run all the way back to halfway to her base. There and there. And pick up those health relics. That would help her a lot. Instead, she's going to stick around along with three other members of her team, and they're going to push down uh, this inner turret on blue team. And they might be able to push down this inhibitor also, but with blue team respawning, they are all here, and this is not going to work out very well. With all that spell vamp, purple team is managing to stay in the fights a little longer than I would expect. But. They are falling. So far it's been a 3 for 1 trade. In blue team's favor. Purple team is on the retreat. Running all the way back across the map. With the help of Zillion they're able to eventually catch up to R8. And pick her off. Morgana very close to falling here also. Zillion is going to go for it. I think he uses ultimate. That is an ace, but he did sacrifice himself for it. And now, these three members of the blue, blue team sorry, are going to try to pick off these towers, but they're not going to be able to do it. They don't quite have the damage out, but not yet. And purple team has come back to life and are defending their base now. So there's quite a big, quite a bit of back and forth in this game. Nocturne, I see, picked up two Negatron cloaks. Trying to get a lot of magic resistance. He did get a war monster already for a lot of health. I would like to see. I'll likely see. Will likely see him go a course of nature. Piece of I believe that's the most magic resist in the game. Plus speed and lots of health regen is always nice. Gragas did get an abyssal scepter. Rise going pretty tanky actually, dude, with a force of nature of his own and a frozen heart. He also has a Banshee's Veil. So he wants to stay in there for a while. Now, Purple Team actually managing to pull off a nice ace, initially only trading one kill for it, but with that Carthasol, another member of the Purple team has fallen and Gragas got quite low, but they still had three members alive. 
after all was said and done. So they were able to push the down that inhibitor and are now pushing the Nexus turrets. Gragas Barrel manages to pick up another ace off that newly respawned Soraka. However, three members of the blue team have just spawned, and Rise needs to get out of there, along with the rest of the purple team, and just back up and collect some help. And just stay in this. They were too far in with all the blue team respawning, and they basically just sacrificed themselves. Blue team triple kill. They did trade 3 for 3 kills, which is pretty impressive for purple. However, they could have just backed off entirely and picked up some of those health relics and been further ahead. Or just been more durable than they would have been otherwise. And then waited for the rest of their team to catch up. And then perhaps taken another ace or so in the next big team fight. Zillion trying to get a kill onto Morgana. I don't think it'll work. Morgana stopped right in front of the health relic. I don't know why she didn't go and pick that up. She would have had time before the bomb went off. Instead, she just stopped. I think it would have saved her, but she fell, as you saw. So that was a rather interesting choice. She did pick up Zanya's Hourglass, though she, perhaps she already had that. She does have Revadon and a lot of spell penetration, however. Several people getting melted there. Six and Soraka didn't fall. Not until later, anyway. Um, but they were taken within a sliver of health. That doesn't really make any sense. Very good. And Ari just melted and fell quite rapidly. Looking at the kills, Karthus and Rise are really the top players here. Karthus with 29 kills and Rise just behind with 27. The next highest is Gragas with 20 kills. Everyone else is relatively low. I'm not sure what the cause of that is. Big team fight here, almost everybody dying. Rise is still still has a lot of health with his ultimate and that will of the ancients. He has a lot of spell penetration and just with his general tankiness. Ari has a lot of health also. Ziggs is taken down pretty low, but at the moment there's really nothing Purple Team can do about it. Ari does get that ace and they are gonna push down the second turret here. So Purple Team did do that quite nicely and we're, we're able to push in and take down all those turrets and now there goes the Nexus. So good game, well played on Purple's part, even being down a player for a while. They managed to hold it up, or hold up, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And my prediction from the beginning of the game is that yes. Um, purple team didn't manage to pull through. I'll just go ahead and assume it's because they have a better team composition. Though, like I was saying, blue team isn't exactly far behind. But, whatever. Purple team came up ahead with about 13 kills there. Over half an hour game. Yeah. Thanks for watching.